In this video, we're looking at project crashing, where we're crashing multiple or reducing multiple activities in the project. We also look at the additional layer of what happens when you have to work to a budget or there is cost involved. Firstly, a quick recap, what is crashing? So when we're talking about crashing a project network, we're talking about what reductions in the duration of activities can be made in order to have an impact on that overall completion time. So can we reduce one or more activities and achieve a saving in the time it takes to complete the entire project? So in the previous video, we looked at um, reducing just single activities and the importance of that being a critical activity. In this session, we'll look at reducing multiple activities. So potentially a critical activity, yes, definitely needs to be reduced, but sometimes you need to couple that with a non-critical activity you know, to enable you to achieve the greatest outcome overall. And then finally, we'll look at this idea of crashing with cost. So this is usually an additional layer to a question where you then have a budget. And most of the time, that is a, a monetary cost that we're talking about, or it may be that you have to achieve a particular outcome in time. When I'm looking at reducing multiple activities, um, I use the table method to assist me. I find it's the easiest way to organize all of the information, particularly when you are doing multiple things at a time. It is slightly different though to when we would use the table method for a single activity. So we're going to utilize the network that's below as our first um, example. So here we have that same network, but activities R, W and X can all be reduced by a maximum of two weeks each. So by up to two weeks. What combination of reductions should be applied to achieve the best overall completion time? So this is where we're trying to do the best thing and we can look at a combination of reductions. So our first step with our table method is firstly to write out all of the possible paths from start to finish. And you can see that I've got that there in the table. Noting with each of those original paths, what is the time taken to get from the start to the finish? So for example, working across activity P, S, V, X, Z, which is this first one here, I've just added the durations. So four plus three plus three plus eight plus six, gives me a total time of 24. When I'm using the table method rather than a forward and backward scan, I can identify my critical path. So initially the critical path for this project network is RUXZ, sorry, with a duration of 26. The next thing I do is I am going to apply all of the reductions that I've been told I can. So in this particular example, I was told R, W and Z could all be reduced by two weeks. So anywhere where any of those activities occur, I can take two weeks off the overall current completion time. So in my first pathway, um, I definitely have an X. So that means I can take two off that current um, original completion time of 24. So it'll come down to 22. The second pathway, again, I have an X, but no R, no W. So again, I can take just two off that current completion or the original completion time bringing it down to 23. For the third pathway, I have an R and I have an X. So I have two activities, which both can be reduced by two. So that means a total of four weeks can be saved. So here 26 minus four would bring that completion time down to 22. And then finally, the fourth path, I have an R and a W. So again, two activities can be reduced by two weeks each. So a total of four weeks off the original, bringing that time now down to 19. So we've applied all of the possible reductions that were made available to us. And that's the important step when you're reducing multiple activities. So take everything that you were told you're allowed to do and reduce everything. 
And so when we've done that, we can see our new critical path. Our new completion time is 23 and our new critical path is Q, T, X, Z with that X having been reduced. So then my next step is to work out what reductions do I actually need to do? And there's a number of ways of doing it. But the process I tend to look at is firstly, I concentrate on the new critical path. So what did I do to achieve that time of 23? Well, by highlighting in my table, that gives me a hint or that helps me track. So I actually reduced X by two weeks. My next step is then to look at the previous, the original critical path and look at what reductions might I need to do in order to achieve this new critical time of 23 weeks. So originally it was 26. I need to bring it down in line with the new critical path. I don't need to exceed, just bring it down into line. So that means I need to save three weeks. Now, if I've already said in order to achieve the new critical path that I have to do X by two, then let's use that because that saving or that reduction is already going to be applied. So I've now cut it by two weeks. I'm down to 24. I need an additional one week and my only option is to use activity R. So there I had to save, I had to reduce by three in total. By looking at the new critical path first, that helped me identify what I absolutely have to do to achieve that new time of 23. And then I look at well, what else might be needed. So now I know I also need to reduce R by one. Once I've looked at those two key things, so the new critical path and the original critical path, I then look at any other paths and make a judgment whether there was a reduction required. So if I look at my first pathway there, I can see original time of 24. Yes, that does need to be reduced to come into line with the 23. The only option there was X. And I can see from the previous working here, I already am reducing X by two. So that X by two will achieve what I need it to do. So no further reductions required. Finally, if I look at the bottom path, um, I was already at 23, so I actually didn't need to do anything. Any further reductions, so here where R is already going to be reduced as well, then that means I would get a, a shorter path here it will come down to 22 because R is having one taken off, but I didn't need to do it in order to meet the new critical path time. So then to wrap up and give my final answer, once I've done all this working off to the side, what combination of reduction should be applied to achieve the best reduction in the overall completion time? I should reduce activity X by two weeks and R by one week. So that gives us that overall saving of three weeks. Um, and we haven't wasted any, we haven't done any additional reductions that weren't necessarily required. So crashing with cost is where this notion of only reducing what's absolutely required comes um, heavily into play. So this example, I have a project network here and the completion times for activities E, F, G, I and J can all be reduced by one day. The cost of reducing the completion time by one day for these activities is shown in the table below. So the reason why reductions might have a cost associated is usually in order to get that particular activity or job done within the project, there needs to be expenditure. So maybe more workers are brought in so that it can be completed faster or maybe more expensive resources. So it is usually about trying to save money or spend the minimum amount required 
in order to achieve the greatest saving overall. So that's where that concept of only reducing what you need to is really important. And then if you have a choice between activities that may both have the same impact, you obviously then want to look at the dollar cost that's been associated with that reduction and choose the most cost effective. You choose the cheapest version. So in order to work out what the minimum cost to complete the project in the shortest time would be, I again want to follow that same idea of applying all of the possible reductions, working out what can be my new minimum completion time, checking what did I need to do in order to achieve it, and then working through what cost is then required in order to meet that new time. Okay, so I've just set up the table and the first thing I need to do is note down all of the possible pathways. So firstly, I could travel across the top of the graph. And so I've got A, D, K, and the time for that path is currently 14. And so working my way through, I then have A, E, I, K, and the length of that path is 15. Through the middle, I have B, F, L, and the length of that path is 14. And along the bottom, I have C, G, J, M, that pathway being 14. And finally, C, H, M, that pathway uh, being 13. So my current critical path is A-E-I-K with a time of 15. So that's my original completion time. Now I can reduce each of these activities, E, F, G, I, and J. So anywhere I see any of those, I can take one off for each of those activities. Okay, they can be reduced by one day. So going through and highlighting any of those reductions, first pathway, none of the activities appear. The second pathway, we have E and we have I. Third pathway, we have F. Fourth pathway, we have G and J. And the fifth pathway, again, we have none there. So now going through and making those reductions. So first pathway, no change. It remains at 14. Second pathway, I have two activities highlighted. So I can reduce by one for each of those. So a total of two days saved. So 15 minus two brings me to 13. Third pathway, just the one activity being reduced there, again by one day. So 14 minus one, 13. Fourth pathway, we have two activities, so again minus two brings that to 12. And the final pathway, no reductions, so that remains at 13. So now looking at our outcome there, we have a new critical path at 14 days. So even though I've gone and been allowed to reply every possible reduction, my best outcome was just a saving of one day. So now following the same steps as before, I'm going to concentrate firstly on the new critical path. In order to achieve that time, did I need to make any reductions? And so this is where highlighting them in the path, the, those um, reduced activities can make this a lot easier. So I can say I didn't make any reductions there. So nothing was required in the first pathway to achieve that new time. When I refer back to the previous critical path, what did I have to do to reduce um, that completion time and meet, so not beat, but just meet that new time of 14. So I need to reduce by one and I had two options. I could do E or I, okay? But I only need to do one of them, not both. So this is where we would refer back to our cost to work out which one is the better option. But we'll do that once we've just checked, are there any other reductions needed? 
So let's look at the remaining three paths. BSL, before any reductions were made, it was already at 14. So no further reduction was needed to achieve that new time. Same with CGJM, even though we had the option of reducing, we didn't need to because the original completion time was also already 14. And finally with CHM, the same, we were already at 13. We were already lower than that new critical path time. So our only two options there that we need to consider is whether we should be reducing um, activity E or activity I. And we can see um, from the table that we've got there that activity E will cost us $3,000 and activity I will cost us $2,000. So obviously if I only need to do one of them, I'm going to choose the cheapest option. So that means in order to um, achieve that minimum overall completion time with the minimum cost, the cost is going to be $2,000. And I'm doing that by reducing I by one day. So this, even though once we've worked through it, it's actually not an overly challenging question. It's often something people um, feel blocked, that they can't have a strategy or they don't have a, a way of answering it. So I want you to have a go at trying this method, become more comfortable with it so that you can um, have a go when you see something that may be more challenging in the exams. I do have some other videos going through some different versions and a different method um, and I will put out some more of some more challenging um, crashing questions as well. But that's it for this video. Thanks.